Hello, everyone. This is my sixth certified, and I'm so happy to be with you today. Thank you for joining us. What's new with you? So much has changed. You would think we all just kept our heads above water, and we did. We came out with exams from home. We figured out how to do things we never thought we would have had to figure out. But today, there's so much more to talk about. Now more than ever, official industry certifications are the key to connecting educators with opportunities to offer more meaningful and measurable skill transferring. Innovation with product delivery has been so robust, there are two other separate sessions. We just finished up one on the Compass Roadmap, talking a little bit more about exams from home. View that recording, it just took place at an hour and a half ago today. And then we've got another one tomorrow, Tuesday at 12 o'clock mountain time about learning products, those learning courseware products and practice products that we use with our certification exams. That's tomorrow, Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Across the CertiPort program's portfolio, there are quite a few updates. And like each year, our team members have carefully considered what's new. And we're gonna do that again. But I want to start with my pathway. We talked about this a little bit last year. We are now presenting certification combinations that open doors, more concrete ways to advance. Of course, with official industry certifications at the foundation, it's applying the idea that if one certification is good, more is better. It prepares us for advancing. This includes advancement within education, our first job, or the promotion we'd like. Right now, we have 16 paths identified, and we have eight more ready the end of July. We have two ways for you to check them out. If you aren't logged in, you can navigate from our homepage through the Educator Resources menu and select My Pathway. There are also some banners right now. This method will show the pathways that are available. It's like sitting down at a restaurant and looking at a menu. Our plan is to continue creating valuable combinations of certifications that point to jobs or opportunities to advance. The other way to check out My Pathway is to log in as a test candidate and select the My Pathway tab. This view will represent your individual progress toward any pathway along with remaining requirements. Sample jobs in the US are there, and you can take that as the starting point for you to do more local research, discovering how many jobs are available, leveraging a pathway, and if it pays higher or lower than the samples we've provided. So if we, we've created a tool for everyone within the CertiPort family to individually assess and progress toward individual advancements all the way to employment opportunities. Now let's shift gears and talk about this year's most important program announcement. Let's first step back for a few minutes and listen to Sean Moon, our senior product manager, filmed at his high school last week. Sean will explain why we all need the new IT specialist program to prepare students better for jobs. After Sean, Ashley Walton, our product marketing manager, will share the details on how to incorporate these certifications in your classrooms this year. Sean, take it away. So among countries that have problems filling positions with the right talent, the US has it as bad as anywhere in the world. Now think about that for just a second. The US is the third most populous country in the world. Also, according to the US News and World Report, the United States has the best education system in the world, and that's based on measurements of the robustness of its public education system, the quality of its university system, the quality of education that you can get here, ranked the US number one. So where is the disconnect? Why is there a talent shortage in somewhere like the United States? We did a little bit more research and thought, does this sound right? Does, does that data really reflect what's going on? We found a study that asked academic institutions about their recent graduates, and it asked, did, were your
your recent graduates ready for the workplace? And interestingly, 72% felt that yes, our recent graduates were ready. Then the researchers went over to the employers and said, were those recent graduates that you just hired ready for the workplace? Only 42% said that that was the case. So there was a 30% spread in perception of, of people that were ready for the workplace and you know, in academic institutions that felt that their candidates were ready. Interestingly, we found another study that went and asked the students, did you feel that you were ready for the workplace? So these are professionals, and the specific question was, did your higher ed experience prepare you well for the workplace? Almost half of them said no. My higher education experience did not prepare me well for the workplace. So again, there's this disconnect, there's this gap, but why is there this gap? I personally don't see how that could be either. I mean, I just think about my own education experience. I'm sitting at my alma mater, my high school that I went to a long, long time ago, and I know that in high school, in college, in graduate school, there was always a big emphasis on career readiness. There was always talk of internships, experiential learning, preparing your resumes, practicing interviewing, et cetera. There was very much a focus on career readiness, so this struck me as strange. But we went and we said, okay, there seems to be a problem here based on all of this research. So the next question is, all right, there's a talent gap. What is in that gap? That's the question that we have to answer is, what is that skills gap made of? So we went and we did our own research. We did some primary research. We, we also took some secondary research to answer that question. What is the skills gap made out of? And we found two aspects, two ways to look at this. One is what we've been calling a core set of skills that everybody needs to have as they enter the workforce, regardless of what job they're gonna fill, what role they're gonna play in the economy, what, kind of, what company they're gonna work for. These are table stakes for anybody entering the workforce. And then after that, there's a set of specializations or job role related skills that companies have a very hard time hiring for that we need to help fill as well. So I wanna share with you for just a minute these specific data points on the core skills that are needed and then the specializations that are in high demand but that have a short supply of talent. And bear with me as we go through a couple lists here, but I think this is really important for us to all understand at a, at a real life level what skills we're looking to, that we need to fill. So let's start with the core curriculum. You can see on the screen here, these are top skills that everybody needs based on our primary research. What we found is everybody needs to be digitally literate. Everybody needs to be productive, productivity skills. Everybody needs to understand basic foundational technologies because it's more and more the case that every company is a technology company and these technologies impact everything we do. Communication skills. Everywhere you look, that's the number one skill sought after by employers is good communication. English skills, specifically related to IT because of how prevalent uh, technology is. And so we need to be able to communicate across borders. Entrepreneurship and basic business skills, just understanding how businesses and organizations function. And then computational thinking. This is getting away from rote learning and regurgitation and more thinking about how to break down complex problems. How do you find patterns? How do you think algorithmically? And that's, a, that's a more and more a necessary skill to be able to function in the complexities that we deal with today. So now let's move over to the specializations. We found some wonderful research by the World Economic Forum that dove into this question exactly like we were looking for. And they found that the specializations that there were gaps in, they, they categorized them into clusters. And three of the top clusters I'm gonna share with you, those are data and AI, cloud computing and engineering, and product development. And so let's look at those lists. Within the World Economic Forum research, they broke down those clusters into the top 10 skills needed for those clusters. So let's start with data and AI. Top 10 skills, data science, data storage and technologies, development tools, 
artificial intelligence, software development lifecycle, management consulting, web development, digital literacy, scientific computing, and computer networking. Okay, so just log those away in your mind for a minute. Those are the top 10 skills. Engineering and cloud computing, top 10 are development tools, web development, data storage technologies, software development lifecycle, computer networking, human-computer interaction, technical support, digital literacy, business management, employee learning and development. Uh, maybe you noticed there was some overlap there, but those are the top 10 for cloud computing and engineering. Product development. We've got software testing, software development lifecycle, development tools, project management, business management, data storage technologies, web development, manufacturing operations, digital literacy, and leadership. So again, I apologize for the list, but we're going to come back to those in just a minute and point some things out to you. But just think about those skills, all right? I showed you four different lists. I have my own experience with the core curriculum of skills that everybody needs. When I first graduated from college, my first job was at a company called Connect PR. It was a public relations agency, and it was a great first job. And I started there as an intern. They hired me during my last semester of college. I kept working there full time afterwards. And things were going really well. They seemed pleased with my work. At one point, they put me on into a new account. And it was a large technology company. And I thought things were going fine. And so I was very surprised one day when the partner managing that account called me into her office and gave me some pretty heavy criticism. She, she laid into me a little bit because she had received a call from this company that I sounded disinterested and disengaged in my phone calls, and they did not think I was a good person to be on the account. That really struck me. That, was, that blindsided me. I felt defensive. I felt hurt. As a new entrant into the workforce, that was hard criticism to take. Uh, thankfully, the company didn't just write me off as having bad communication. They sent me to Toastmasters International. Maybe you've heard of that. They focus on public speaking. And there was a local chapter nearby. And that was a good experience. And I learned a lot about communication at that point. And I'm not perfect at it. I'm still working at it. But I look back on that, and I think I did not have to learn that lesson in the workforce. I could have learned that lesson in school. And it's not that I was never given opportunities to do public speaking in school. It was never that I never saw good examples of communication in school. It was that I never made a connection in my brain at school that communications was a skill that I needed to hone in order to be successful in the workplace. And so I think we can do a good job of preparing students with this core curriculum of skills so that they are ready to succeed. And yes, there's going to be learning all throughout a career, but this is the foundation that they need. Now think for a minute about those specializations that I shared with you. Did you notice that many of those skills were STEM related? And I'm not here to say STEM is the end all be all of someone of what everybody needs to do. but. It is true that every company is becoming a technology company, or already is. Now, I want to share some interesting statistics with you based on some other research that we found. This is a couple years old based on um, the last full year of data that was available and needed to research. Of freshmen coming into high school, 28% expressed interest in STEM. Of seniors graduating from high school, only 16% expressed interest in STEM. Of undergrad degrees granted, only 14% of graduates graduated in STEM. So you can see the drop off there as they go through their academic experience. Now let's focus for a second on the 16% that graduated high school with an interest in STEM. When they went through STEM programs, imagine it was one of your students at your schools. When they went through your STEM program, did they learn anything about cloud computing or AI? A lot of STEM programs are still working on getting coding to be mainstream. But foundational technologies like cloud and AI are what is going to be the foundation for much of what we do in the future. And even if it was the 84% who was not interested in STEM, 
they need to have an understanding of those technologies. If they are interested in STEM, there's a great career opportunities. I've heard of some big tech companies offering NFL level signing bonuses for good AI talent because it's so hard to find. So that's a great option for your students if they are interested. So we'll share more, but we wanted to share this exciting news with you in the context of what these students need to be successful as they enter the workplace. Thank you. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Sean. Wow, with Sean's video, there are great opportunities within the job market if students are prepared. I love education. I believe it is so important. And you as teachers have one of the most important roles in preparing young people for their future. My mother was an educator for her entire career and taught in the classroom. I appreciate all you do for your students and I'm grateful to be here today with you. In terms of the core skills that everyone needs to know, Certiport provides the solution to this talent shortage and skills gap we are facing. These are the top skills that are needed when entering the workforce, and the Certiport exams offered address each one. We are filling out the Certiport portfolio with new certifications to fill these gaps. Artificial intelligence and cloud computing assist in understanding foundational technologies. Our new English for IT and computational thinking exams address two additional core skills. These are brand new exams that we are adding to our portfolio to help you help your students be ready for the workforce. But what about the specializations that Sean was talking about? In February of this year, Microsoft made the decision to announce the retirement of Microsoft Technology Associate. If you are familiar with this program or are a customer, you were notified of these dates on the screen. And as of June 30th, MTA will no longer be sold. Side note, if you would like to purchase any additional MTA vouchers, please reach out to your sales representative over the next few days. Because of the retirement of MTA, we're excited to announce the IT Specialist Program, which will be available starting July 1st and will cover similar topics as MTA, but are updated and improved. They will look familiar to you if you have been using MTA, but we'll also be adding to this program to make sure you're, we're addressing the main specialized skills that Sean talked about in the career clusters with the worst skills gaps. This is a perfect time for students or graduates who are considering or pursuing a career in information technology. Here you can see all 13 certification exams, including the ITT Specialist Program. These are the names of the certifications as well as the timeframe in which they will launch. The first 10 listed will be available in the month of July. All exams will cover skills required across various technologies. It is also a great starting place to consider professional technology certifications that are a little more specialized and platform specific. These exams will set up students for an IT career and to snag that awesome job they've always been looking for. When each of the IT specialist exams release, not only will the certification be available, but the materials to prepare for the exam will be as well. There will be a learning and practice component for all 13 certifications in the IT specialist program. Have I piqued your interest yet? Are you wanting details about what is covered in these 13 new exams? The objective domains for each of these exams are available at the link on the screen, certiport.com slash ODs. You can download a copy to review. On the right hand side of uh, is a sample of what the ODs will look like. They cover much of the same technology, including commonly used Microsoft technologies as the MTA program. But the IT specialist program covers other important topics and platforms as well. And that expansion will continue over the years. If you have specific questions about what is covered on a specific exam, take a look at the ODs at this link. We also have a program overview available to download. This data sheet includes a description of each exam, 
It can be found at certiport.com slash IT specialist. If you use the left hand menu to navigate, go to the resources page. On this resources page is a link to download the IT specialist data sheet. This program is sponsored by Pearson, which is the lar world's largest learning company and, uh, a major, um, and a major IT training entity. The program is also endorsed by CertNexus, which is a vendor neutral certification body, providing emerging technology certifications and micro credentials for business, data, IT, and security professionals. There will also be specific titles that various entities will endorse. And we will also be working with ACE to obtain college credit, um, college credit, and we will let you know when that process is complete. Are you interested in experiencing the IT specialist exams? We have a unique offer for all of you who are listening to this presentation and attending certified. If you go to the link at the bottom of the screen, right now you will see a landing page with a form so go ahead screenshot that screenshot that link you can go to it now go to it after this presentation and if you're interested in seeing an IT special exam fill out the form and you'll receive an email with information on how to redeem a demo of our learning content receive a code for practice test and also an exam voucher you could be one of the first ones to see the content in an IT specialist exam, prepare for it, and then certify. This offer is available now through September 1st. You will have access to the IT specialist exams as they become available. The keys are good for 30 days once they are redeemed. If you would like to try more than one IT specialist exam, which we would encourage you to do so, feel free to fill out the form um, more than once. If you purchase IT specialist products through your CertiPort sales representative, they are good for a year. So it will include all exams releasing in July, as well as the three new exams launching in October and December of this year. Each exam in the IT specialist program will earn a certification when passed. And we're big on making sure students utilize that certification to progress to the next step in their journey. To that end, we've got an awesome digital badges that can help them to learn, practice, certify, and then advance. I know that we have covered a lot today about the IT specialist program and the new exams releasing. If you have any questions, please attend the X Ask the Expert sessions being held on Wednesday, or your CertiPort sales representative can help you out. These new exams and the IT specialist program help to address the problem of talent shortage in the market and prepare students for their future. Jeffrey, would you agree? Totally. Thank you so much, Ashley. This is the most important work we have done so far, in my opinion, to help educators do more to prepare students for good, very available jobs. Ashley, that was awesome. I really appreciate you reviewing the new IT specialist program. All the exams are coming out in July, right? Yep, the first 10 will be available in July. Exciting stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah. So before we started talking about IT specialist, I mentioned that our pathways are now available for you to check out. And the first pathway that I'll share today is an example from within the IT specialist program. Combining certifications found in the new IT specialist program really points to in-demand jobs. One example of that is an application developer. We did research and found that a combination of earning these four, HTML and CSS, JavaScript, software development, and HTML5 application development, certifications from IT specialists will really set someone up nicely for jobs such as a junior developer, an application developer, or, or applications engineer. Salaries for which are typically between $40,000 and $70,000 per year. So I talked about my pathway being very important and useful to you and also the IT specialist program. We're now gonna to go to one of my favorite parts of this session that we've been doing for six years now, 
which is really going back to every single program and drinking a bit from the fire hose. There's a lot of information to cover. Every product manager that manages these programs assume that you know the basics about the program and that you're here today because you wanna find out what's new. So it's not gonna be a complete review for each program, just the new information. We'd like to direct you to ask the experts and you can, you can speak with those individuals yourself directly during the booth time, or you can, you can send them an email. It's tomorrow, Wednesday, the 23rd from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Or if you prefer to send a note now at the end of today's presentation, we're gonna share the contact information. We'll also provide our annual certified What's New Flyer highlighting key points and takeaways from today's presentation. So you don't feel you need to take notes if you don't want to, but we're gonna cover a lot of information. You ready? Okay. Connected to core skills that Sean highlighted, we look forward to the new English for IT certification, which is now part of the Communication Skills for Business program. Now you may be thinking, how does this apply to me? If you are teaching here in the United States, 20% of the US is non-native English speakers. And there are lots of English as a second language programs in many schools. This is a relevant, important exam. The English for IT exam will be available by October. This exam does not replace things like the Pearson Test of English or any other general English proficiency exam. It is an exam, an English for specific purpose product that can supplement general English proficiency testing specific to people who will be working in an IT related environment, which is just about everyone in today's economy. This exam measures listening, reading, and use of English specifically related to IT. Let's talk about Adobe now. We have officially rebranded our Adobe program. It's now called Adobe Certified Professional, which means students will now more than ever easily communicate to others, visual, video, and web skill mastery. Everyone who has earned an Adobe certification with one of our Live in the App exams has now also been granted that same certification with the Adobe Certified Professional name. They also received a new badge to show off. Along with this name change, we made changes to the specialty credentials. We simplified the requirements allowing individuals to focus and specialize in just two of the related titles instead of all three. 2021 exams are coming. Some are out now and the rest will be available in English for the North American school year by August. These new exams have a slightly updated objective domain, but are very familiar to anyone who has studied for and earned an older Adobe Live in the App certification. You can try the exams that are available now. Lastly, we remind you that the 2015 and 2018 exams retire the end of this month. If you're using one of these older versions, please transition to the 2021 exams in the new school year. If you're nervous about the changes in the objective domains, you can use the 2020 exams as a good stepping stone on your way to updating to a new version in the next year. Autodesk. We have great coverage with our Autodesk certified user exams. Whether your students are looking into architecture, engineering, product design, or media and entertainment, we have the official industry recognized certifications for leading Autodesk software titles. Autodesk releases new software updates around March of each year. Earlier this year, they launched their 2022 titles and we have 2022 compatible exams coming this fall. We also support three years of Autodesk software with our exams. So when we release the 2022 exams, we will support 2022, 2021, and 2020 versions of the software. Plan for updates to your labs if you need them. Apple. We recently announced two new Apple certification exams. The app development with Swift certified user exam certifies learners ability to demonstrate fundamental iOS app development skills with Swift 
and validates that they have knowledge of core concepts and practices that professional SWIFT programmers use daily. This certification and practice tests are available now and is aligned with the Develop in SWIFT Fundamentals course. Now the new one. The App Development with SWIFT Associate exam certifies learners' ability to demonstrate their knowledge of the impact of computing and apps on society, economics, and cultures while exploring iOS app development. This certification and practice test is planned to release the end of this month and is aligned with the Develop in Swift Explorations course. Both the Fundamentals and Explorations courses can be found in the Apple Bookstore and are also available for LMS download in Canvas Commons. ESB. A few months ago, we made the ESB site license bigger and better. All ESB site licenses sold in the US now include EntreEd's Educator Resource Guide and the Nifty Entrepreneurial Mindset Index. The Educator Resource Guide is a fabulous compilation of resources specifically designed for entrepreneurship teachers. Teachers can even earn professional development hours by going through the content. The Mindset Index is for students. It's a 20 minute assessment that your students can take to learn more about their strengths. There are no right or wrong answers. This is a fun, valuable activity your students will love. We also want you to know that we've recently updated the ESB objectives and the exam. The new exam is called ESB version two and it points to the same certificate. The first ESB exam is still available and will retire in another year. Earn the Visual Design Freelancer badge by adding the ESB certification to your Adobe certifications. This shows that you are business savvy and set up for long-term success. This year, you'll see a few new certification exams from Intuit. The first is called Design for Delight Innovator, and it pairs nicely with our ESB exam. The exam was just released a couple of months ago. Design for Delight is into its branded design thinking process. It's an iterative process for solving problems, creating and developing new ideas or products. When you pass both the Design for Delight Innovator and the ESB version two exams, you will receive a master certification in entrepreneurship. Having this master certification shows that you have the skills necessary to start your own business. The next new exam from Intuit is called Intuit Certified Bookkeeping Professional. It will be available in early July, just around the corner. This exam is a professional level exam and we anticipate that it will be very popular with community college accounting programs and high schools that continually push their bounds. Those who earn this bookkeeping professional certification should certainly have their eye on advancing their career to that of a staff accountant. By adding the other certifications shown here, they will be well on their way to earning higher paying accounting positions. The last Intuit announcement is that we will be releasing a significant update to the QuickBooks online exam in early July. A lot going on in July. We have updated objective domains and created all new items. The QuickBooks certification alongside certifications for communication skills for business and Microsoft Word, Excel, and Outlook make an excellent resume for an office manager candidate. For those of you that attended Certified last year, we spent about half of our What's New session talking about Global Standard 6 within our IC3 program. The products were released last year and we completely redesigned the IC3 framework to provide stackable certifications that can be implemented based on learners' competency levels and program requirements. It really, really is a nice update and it's a pretty major update. We want to recognize schools who understand that digital literacy is the foundation for educational and career success and are pleased to announce schools now have an opportunity to become IC3 digital literacy certified schools. 
Highland Schools District in Florida has long used IC3 in its middle school programs and piloted GS6 this past school year with great success. Eleanor Roosevelt High School in East Vail, California includes IC3 in their technical applications course to enhance students' computer literacy skills and enable them to be successful in their post high school endeavors. We commend these schools for their dedication to their student success and recognize them as members of the first ever group of IC3 digital certified schools who show commitment to closing the skills gap and enabling their students to easily navigate through our digital world. Not only does Global Standard 6 lead to mastery of digital literacy skills, it puts candidates on the path to become workforce ready. The workforce ready credential provides a foundation for success in almost every workplace and will help candidates prove they have the skills to meet the demands of today's accelerated economies. Employers need employees with specific foundational skills, including digital literacy, competence in Microsoft Office, and how to communicate effectively. These employability skills are the framework that will advance candidates on their path to workforce success. Last year, we told you about a few new exams coming to the Microsoft Fundamentals program, which has seen a lot of growth over the past year. This year, three more new exams recently released. These are in-demand topic areas. The three new exams are SC900, Microsoft Security, Compliance, and Identity Fundamentals, also known as SCI. This certification is targeted to those looking to familiarize themselves with the fundamentals of security, compliance, and identity, SCI, across cloud-based and related Microsoft services. The MB910 exam, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Fundamentals for CRM. This exam covers the features and capabilities of Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is a full service, rapidly growing CRM platform from Microsoft. And the third exam, the MB920, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Fundamentals for ERP. This exam covers the features and capabilities of Microsoft Dynamics 365, specific to finance and operations apps. So similar to MB910, but specific to finance and operations. Here's the big one, Microsoft Office Specialist. Over the past year, we've put a lot of effort tweaking the MOS program to improve the experience. And some of those tweaks have benefited anyone testing on any of our exams. Those improvements include streamlining the exam experience, Candidates have fewer screens to go through and it's quicker to get into the exam in general. Tutorials. Moss features some awesome new tutorials which are more easily digested for candidates to make sure they know how to navigate the experience. I highly recommend before the exam day, the day before, you make sure that all of your students have reviewed the tutorial. The next improvement the way that we are handling the office licensing changes. Microsoft has been involving their office licensing and some of that has caused issues for some of you when it comes to launching the exams. We've been working hard to ensure you don't see those problems. The good news is that we have made some progress and we will continue to work on cracking that nut to make sure these issues don't happen. Finally, improvements to the back end handling of out of the ordinary situations. Sometimes candidates, usually those who are not prepared, will do weird things in the applications during the exam, and it throws the exam engine for a loop. We've worked hard and made some really cool improvements to be able to handle these curveballs better, so there should be fewer frozen exams or incomplete exams as we administer these world-class live-in-the-app exams. As far as pathways for MOSS, many of you are familiar with the associate and expert certifications for the 365 2019 version of the exams and the master certification for the MOSS 2013 and 2016 versions. We are so excited that those are now on the My Pathway map 
that I talked about earlier. So you and your students can track progress toward earning higher level certifications within the MOS program. MOS is interesting too, because you may not be able to get one of the jobs associated with these pathways. For example, a business analyst, a sales manager, a quality engineer, et cetera, if you only have MOS. But if you aren't very productive, and if you aren't proficient at Microsoft Office, you're not going to get there. So these certifications go a long way towards setting someone up for really good paying jobs. Finally, we know a lot of your MOS programs have been affected by at home or hybrid learning. We have worked to ensure that you have learning practice and certification options you can use no matter what situation you're in. PMI, we talked about PMI last year and the project management ready certification is available. And second to communication, project management has been shown as one of the most in-demand skills that employers are looking for across all industries. In the past 12 months, in Orlando, Florida alone, there were nearly 10,000 job postings requesting or requiring project management skills. Project management is not just applicable to the IT space. Projects are everywhere. The iPhone, Disney+, Plus the COVID-19 vaccine, the Notre Dame Cathedral restoration. The success of these and every other project depend on organized people with the skills proven by obtaining the PMI Project Management Ready Certification. I'd like to highlight the Assistant Project Manager pathway. Earning Project Management Ready, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, as well as the communications skills for business exam will set students and individuals up to get a head start on their way toward a career in project management in any career field they desire. Unity. You might be familiar with our Unity Programmer Certification, which has been around for a few years now. But this last year, the Unity Certified User Program gained two new exams. The first is the Artist Certification, which focuses on how art, animation, and interaction with 3 and 2D functions within Unity. The second is the VR Developer Specialization Exam. This focuses on how to implement VR into your code and to create VR experiences and programs. To earn the VR Developer Certification, you must first pass the programmer exam to ensure you have good foundational skills. One popular use of the Unity software is in game production. The most effective way of getting a job in the video game industry is having the skill that sets the skill set that proves you know what, is, what it takes to develop an engaging video game. Creative students who enjoy video games, creating stories in new worlds, who are able to manage teams and track tasks are great candidates for the video game producer pathway. This is earned by passing the Unity Certified User Programmer, Microsoft PowerPoint and Communications Skills for Business. Did you know most states will grant money to help pay for approved CTE industry recognized credentials? These are the states, the ones in green, with lists of approved certifications, many of which are tied to funding opportunities. And with the update of Perkins 5, a key CTE, a key CTE federal grant, you may see some movement or changes in your region. Some states may move towards certification and some may change the way they handle it. If you want to make sure a certification stays or gets approved, reach out to your respective territory manager who can assist you. One of the steps states are taking to ensure quality certifications are being offered is to require letters from businesses and workforce boards supporting the proposed certification. certification. If you have any of these connections, we're happy to work with you to further these approval initiatives. I don't know about you, but that was quite the fire hose. And I hope you're all hanging on. In closing, 
we have been taking our own notes on this presentation, and we've also included contact information, resources that point to the experts assigned to each program and each owner of each pathway. To locate these notes and resources, please visit the certified webpage where you clicked to join today's session. As outlined in this screen capture on your slide, you will find the ones, the notes under the files tab. The CERTIPORT team, along with fellow breakout session presenters, is eager to plan how to effectively incorporate official industry recognized certifications into your education offerings. Go to Ask the Experts Wednesday at 11 a.m. It's a two hour session from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. or reach out by email for more information. We hope we've shared something today that makes your jobs easier something relevant as you adapt to change and look for ways to engage your students and bring greater success to your organization and help students be ready for the workforce. We know your jobs are hard and appreciate everything you're doing to stay above water keeping up. Thanks for drinking from the fire hose here today, learning and exploring with me, something new you might do. I wish you a great day and the best school year ever. <laughs>